When designing your base, you need to protect yourself from the zombie horde, create the most efficient workflow for your resources, and keep the raiders from stealing your stuff. When you are designing your base, there are four things you need to keep in mind. First, there is the Horde. Years ago, the best tactic for the Horde was to make sure that all of your outer walls were level 1 and to avoid your base when you saw this. But the Horde is very different now. The main weakness of the current Horde is that it cannot break through level 3 walls. So naturally, the best way to deal with them now is to make sure that all of your outer walls are level 3. However, if you are a free-to-play player, this is going to take a while. In fact, some players struggle to get more than just a few level 3 walls. If you are one of those players, make sure to check out my playlist called the efficacious way to get rich. But even following those steps, it will take you a while. So in the meantime, I have five suggestions for you. First, when you upgrade your walls, I recommend waiting to upgrade a wall until you have resources to upgrade it all the way to level three so that you don't give the zombie horde a chance to destroy your level two walls. Second, when you upgrade your outer walls to stone, don't upgrade them right next to each other but rather upgrade every other one. The reason for doing this is because zombies die instantly when they come in contact with the stone wall, which can sometimes include the walls right next to it. So spreading them out kills more zombies and therefore saves more walls. Third, I recommend starting with the third, fifth, seventh, 12th, 14th, and 16th walls of each direction. The reason for this is because even though we can't predict what direction the horde will come from, they almost always spawn near those sections of your walls in whatever direction they do end up coming from. So you want to fortify those spots first to kill as many zombies as possible. Also keep in mind that the zombie horde will pass through the garage as if it doesn't even exist, so do not count on the garage for protection. Fourth, if you have already built a lot of level 2 walls that you'd like to protect, you can show up when the horde spawns to redirect them to save your walls. The horde consists of 30 crowd zombies and it takes three of them to destroy one level two wall. So if you aggro them towards you in such a way that it spaces them out, your level two walls can destroy them without being destroyed. And then they automatically reset by the time of the next horde. And then lastly, once you get the resources to destroy the witch enough times to get her head as a trophy, then you can wait until the zombie horde is less than three minutes from arriving and put one normal log in there to reset them. By doing this, you can keep the horde away for over a month. And you can extend this even more if you don't log on right afterwards because the 24 hour timer doesn't start until you go back to visit your base. Now, some people deal with this problem by not building any walls at all. This isn't a horrible tactic because since you can choose not to be right in this game, there are no direct consequences for not having walls. But the choice to not be raided necessitates that you cannot participate in raiding manufactured bases, which is a great way to grow in wealth. The second thing you need to consider in base construction is your workflow. When you come home from gathering resources, it is extremely helpful to have a good workflow to your base. For those of you who don't know, the welcome mat sets your spawn point for when you enter your base, so I recommend putting it to where you start your workflow. I think the beginning of your workflow should start with your woodworking room because it is the most common resource you will need to get, and then your stone followed by your furnaces and then your sewing machines. But honestly, it's really up to what makes the most sense in your mind. The most important aspect of making your base have a good workflow is that you remember where everything is and that you develop a system for putting everything away quickly. If you don't create a system or you don't remember where you put things, then you will find yourself wasting a lot of time running back and forth, putting things away after each run. I would suggest building the max amount of chest as soon as you can so that it is easy easier to stay organized from the beginning because it will only get harder as you advance in the game. The more chests that you have, the more that you can separate things by type, which is helpful for remembering where things are. A few other suggestions I have, which may be pretty obvious to some of you, is to put your furnaces near your workbench, put your shower and water catcher together. I put four bottles in my rain catcher and every time I visit, I drink two of them and then shower and then put the four empty bottles back in the rain catcher. And then some people like to put those near the garage or I think it's better to just build a second rain catcher. Also put your tanning and meat drying racks together because when you have one of these resources, you will probably have the other one as well. Your gunsmith bench and recycler should go near your stockpile rooms. Your refined melting furnace should go near your fireplaces because it will need a ton of coal. And your garden should too because you will want to cook the carrots that you grow there. And then lastly, your hydroponic system should be near your chemistry station. As I mentioned earlier, these are probably pretty obvious to some, but I felt like I needed to mention them. 
The third thing that you need to keep in mind is protecting your stuff from AI raiders that will retaliate after you raid manufactured bases. The best way to defend against the raiders is to build a seven by seven metal walls, which can fit all of your stuff, but cannot be broken. But that would cost hundreds of dollars. So the second best way is to build two outer level three walls with a lot of level two wall dividers. By doing this, after breaking the outer wall, your AI opponent will start to follow the path of least resistance. It is important to put a few chests in these walls, but they can have junk items that you want to get rid of anyways in those chests. After breaking enough of your level two walls, they will run out of noise allowance and leave with only the few junk items that you wanted them to take. Using this strategy with level one and two walls does not seem to work as well for two reasons. First, destroying level one walls requires almost no noise to an AI raider, and second, because they do not seem to avoid level two walls as much as they do level three walls. So that is the second best tactic for dealing with AI raiders, but keep in mind that the devs watch all of my videos and often when I post strategies like this, they simply change the programming, which quickly makes my video outdated. The last thing you need to keep in mind when you're building your base is the least important right now, but will eventually be the most important, protecting yourself from players trying to get your stuff. This will eventually be the most important thing about your base. It doesn't matter how awesome you are at playing the game or how well you collect resources, if it is easy to steal from you, you are always going to stay poor. I have four suggestions on designing your base to protect yourself against other players. Tip number one, hide everything. Information is power. The more they know about your base, the easier it will be for them to figure out your strategy. This is why I use what I'm calling the Great Wall of China strategy. This wall around my base stops the zombie horde and it makes raiders run around my base instead of getting my stuff, but I originally came up with this strategy with true multiplayer in mind. The first reason I built it was because when someone approaches my base, it is going to look like this. And then when they go to all the effort of destroying one of my walls, my base is going to look like this. I'm forcing them to use two C4s even to just get a peek inside. Furthermore, if I'm able to defend my base, it allows me to travel to any area of the map without my enemies seeing me, which gives me the surprise advantage for taking them out. I've used this strategy in Kafir's more advanced game, Frostborn, which has actual multiplayer but is currently still in closed beta, and it has worked amazingly for scouting where the enemy is attacking from and sneaking up behind them when they start to break deeper into our base. But of course, a lot of things are different in Frostborn, so if you want to know what Last Day on Earth might look like when true multiplayer comes out, make sure to check out my base building video for Frostborn. This brings us to tip number two, make them spend more than you do. When you look at the track that they're going to have for us to make, they are expensive. Having a minefield on the outside of your base will allow any punk to just wander around and set off your traps. This will cost you a lot of resources replenishing your traps, and that guy can just come back and take his stuff, if he even had stuff. So if you're mapping out your future base, make sure that your traps are reserved for only serious invaders by making them spend resources like C4 to even get to your traps. If you do this well, you will be able to make your your base gain resources for you. For example, I am hoping to have a line of landmines here with turrets dispersed among them. When a committed invader uses C4 to break through my inner walls and tries to take out one of my turrets, which I imagine he'll be prepared for, if I can set it up to where he hits a landmine at the same time he is getting shot by a turret, he will probably not be able to heal fast enough to avoid dying. This would leave his body in my base with turrets guarding it, which means I have a greater chance of logging in in time to gather his equipment. Further Furthermore, if I am on, I could use my outer walls to sneak up and attack him right at the same time that he is engaging my defenses. So setting up a great defense is a great way to make sure that your base can make you get even richer. Some of the best items that we were able to get in Frostborn were items that were delivered to our front door by those trying to raid us. Tip three. Put yourself in their shoes. If you were your enemy, how would you outsmart yourself? This may seem basic, but a lot of people don't actually sit back and try to think through the eyes of their enemy. I used this approach when I used to play Clash of Clans several years ago and it allowed me to get to the top even though I refused to spend money like most of the other top players. I had level 7 walls when my competition had level 12 walls, and often I would still beat them because of this mentality. I would sit back and look at my base and I would think, 
how would I attack this? And then I would make adjustments and then I would do it again and then I would make more adjustments. I would also watch replays. I don't know if Last Day on Earth will offer replays, but you will be able to see where they busted through your walls. When you see a pattern, compensate for it. Lastly, put your most valuable stuff in the inner rooms. I've got my medical table, my woodworking, and my stone all in outer rooms because they use and produce the least valuable items. Meanwhile, I keep my food and armor and weapons in a place that they would have to break through four walls to get to them. Well, that's it guys. Hope that helps. This video is a remake of one of my older videos, so if you want to see how much this game has changed or how much this channel has improved, make sure to check out the original video called Last Day on Earth Base Layout or How to Build Your Base in Last Day on Earth Survival. If you are interested in subscribing, I post a new video every Friday at the same time each week. Also, I'm going to be making a lot of Last Day on Earth videos over the next couple months because I'm getting really close to 100,000 subscribers, so I'm going to try to speed that up. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.